In this video, we will look at building counter-controlled loops using the while loop syntax. The, a counter-controlled loop is a loop that you know how many times it, it needs to execute. For example, a loop needs to execute 10 times or 1,000 times. When you know how many times you need to loop, you can build a counter-controlled loop. Let's look at the counter-controlled loop pattern. Here for um, reference, I have the four steps of a good loop where we initialize our conditional variables, check a condition. If the condition is true, we do some work. And then last thing we do is update the conditional variables before rechecking the condition. So we're going to do the same four steps for a counter-controlled loop. But the way we set it up is a little bit different. What we're going to do here is we're going to have, we want to set up in our counter some start value, some end value, and some increment value. Now when you create a counter-controlled loop, all you're doing is building a counter that counts from one value to another value. And while you haven't reached that final value, you keep doing the work and you keep counting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a counter variable that begins at the start value. And our loop condition will be as long as that counter va variable or that counter value has not reached the end point, we're going to do the work and then update the counter by whatever the increment value is. So here are our four steps to, be, to build a good counter-controlled loop. Now here I have in my, um, my example here, while the counter is less than or equal to an end value, it, this depends on whether you are counting down or up to an end value. If I am counting from a low value to a high value, I would use the less than conditional operator. Uh, if I was counting from a high value down, then I want to loop while the counter is greater than the end value. And again, with the increment, adding the increment, if we are counting up, we want to add an increment value. If we are count counting down, we would subtract an increment value. Let's look at some example um, counters here. Let's say we wanted to create a counter-controlled loop that looped 10 times. Well, I could create a start value that started at 0 and an end value that ended at 9, and I could count by 1s, increment by 1s. And to count from 0 to 9 by 1s, this would, would take 10 steps. Or I could start counting at 1 and count up till 10 by 1s. This would also be 10 steps. Or I could count from 10 up to 100 by 10s. This would also take 10 steps. Or I could even start at 10 and count down by to 1 by 1s. This would take 10 steps. So really, when you are going to create the the starting and end points of a counter-controlled loop, there are an infinite number of possibilities on how you set up the counter. And so we need to kind of develop some intuition on what would be optimal uh, counter values. Let's look at a couple examples. All right, for our first example, I want to print the, the, the text hello world to the console 10 times. Now here's an example of doing work repeatedly, so we want to consider using a loop. And I want to print it 10 times so I know exactly the number of times I need to loop. So I can follow the counter-controlled loop syntax. And so let's see if we can set this up. First of all, we need to consider a, a start value and an end value and an increment value. So I'm going to create a variable called start value and let's set it let's start it at 1. And then I'm going to create an end value variable. We'll count up to 10. And I'm going to create an increment uh, variable, and we'll increment by 1s. I want to count from 1 to 10 by 1s. All right. Now I'm going to initialize a conditional variable that will control whether I need to keep counting or not. So this is our initialize step. Whoops, sorry, I initialize. So I'm going to create a variable named count, and I will call it counter, and I'm going to initialize it to my start value. Now the loop condition is we want to count while my counter is less than or equal to my end value. Our counter is starting at 1, and we want to eventually reach the end value 10. Now inside the loop we are going to do some work 
our work here is just printing hello world. So we will put a, a statement that implements our work. And then finally, we have our update statement. I want to count, increment my counter. So I'm going to say my counter is equal to my old counter value plus my increment value. Okay, so here we are implementing the counter controlled loop kind of pattern here. Let's run this and see how it looks. And here we see we've printed hello world 10 times. So it looks like it's working. And I want to illustrate that there are more than one, there's more than one way to do this. For example, if I start at 10 and I count up to 100 by 10s, my counter control loop will still take 10 increments to, to get there, to get from the start value to the end value. All right, let's do another example here. Example two, we're going to count, print a countdown from 10 to 1, then print the, the word surprise. Now, I could, I could look at this and say, okay, I know I need to loop 10 times, so I could start counting at 1 and count up to 10, because I know that will, by 1s, and I know that will loop 10 times. But since I want to print the values 10 to 1, it makes more sense for me to try to choose a counter that I can actually use in my work. So if I, if I am need to print some incrementing or decrementing numbers, why don't I try to choose counters that help me with my printout? So for example here, maybe what we would do is I would say, take my counter variable. Let me list my steps here. So first we're going to initialize. I'm going to take my counter variable and initialize it to 10. I'm going to the start value in this case is going to be 10. Now I'm going to build my loop condition. I want to loop while my counter is greater than or equal to 1. So 1 being my end value. Now in the first example I created some variables to hold these values. But in the second example I'm just defining my start value, my end value with literal numeric values. So while my counter is greater than or equal to 1, I want to count down. So I need my counter to start higher. Then I'm going to print console.write. Uh, sorry, let me make a little string here. I'm going to insert the count counter variable, and we'll put a couple of spaces in here. All right. What I'm trying to illustrate here. Oops. Let me get my syntax correct. Okay. What I'm trying to illustrate here is I am I have set up a counter that counts from 10 to 1, and I'm going to use that counter variable value in my work. Now, in this case, I could change loop counter to go from 100 down to 10, and I could count by 10s, but then I can't use that counter information in my work. Because I want to print 10 down to 1, I set my counters to count from 10 down to 1. So here's our work, loop work. And finally, our update. We never want to forget the update. I'm going to take my counter value and set it equal to my old counter value, minus 1. So I'm subtracting 1 from my counter, starting at 10, going down to 1. Now when we're done with our, our counting, we want to print surprise. So after the, the loop, I will say console.writeLine, and we'll print surprise, and we'll test it out. So here we've counted 10 down to 1 and then printed surprise. So here's a brief introduction on counter controlled loops. As long as you can define a start va starting point and an end point and know how much to increment by, counter controlled loops always follow this very kind of same pattern.